today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. All right, it is show number 42, and the Deuce is in the house here, Deuce Luke, and this is our show about autism, and there he is, and he has jumped over many hurdles in his life, and today we're going to talk about Sims and some other things, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about college, because it's getting close. Very Three close. weeks. Three weeks. All right, it's right after the intro. We are back. I'm Martin Falls. Deuce Luke is in the house. The Deuce is loose. And we are at show number 42. As I said before, the man, the myth, the, the legend. legend. Deuce Luke, who's, I've watched your confidence grow over the weeks. You're ready to go. Perfect. You're peaking at the right time to go to college. You got me there, sir. All right. Well, no, you got yourself there. Your parents got you there. Ms. Sherry got you there. A lot of people got you there. That's Ms. We, Andrea. Yeah, we helped you along on your journey. How about that? That's good. But you did it. You got to do it yourself, right? Of course, again. I right. mean, you got to be open. You got to be open. Open and open-minded. All right, there you go. All right, so what are we talking about today, Sims? Well, we're talking about Sims today and how it can. Be, how you can see we got my my buddy Anthony here playing with a, with a soccer ball and we had to do some pretty cool stuff with it. So we have a little business. It may not be much, but it's going to be something. Now let's open the store. All right. Open for business. So who owns the store? Anthony. Okay, he, he's the owner. He's the owner. Thought he might have been a salesperson or something. Nope, he's the owner. Okay. He, he may be all muscles and stuff. I'm sure he may be serious, but he's honestly a good guy. He's a real softy, but plus self-assured. There you go. All right. So I believe we're going to have our first customer. Oh, <laughs> they're already going for the toilet. <laughs> Looks like they, they know what they want. So we got with customers. Oh, wait, what's the store sell? You got to tell me that. All right. We sell paintings over here, but we're trying a new thing out where we sell um, toilets. You're selling toilets. <laughs> you can sell toilets. <laughs> All right. Do you know who invented the toilet, by the way? No clue. You, you're going to laugh. John Crapper. <laughs> I'm not lying to you, dude. You can look it up. Oh, my god. Wait, gosh. hold on. Let me, let me make sure that was the exact. Hey, Siri, who invented the toilet? Oh, my bad. <laughs> it says the first flush toilet was invented by Sir John Harrington in 1596, but I always heard John Crapper. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna check that for we gotta make sure we have our facts. Anyway, so yeah, y'all can look that up for me because I think we I'm are correct. gonna be looking at some new customers who are just browsing around the, the restaurant, gonna ask them a few questions, and this is kind of like a spammy thing. They so a lot of them looking at the toilet, that's for sure. <laughs> Sarah, it's a lot of them looking at the toilet. Where you came up with that, Deuce? I'm curious. You it was that, like that's your funny personality. No, it was just one of the features they had. Oh, okay. All right. Gotcha. I, I'm not sure why they had to have that, but they did. And gotcha. it's, it's funny. It's actually. It's not only that. You got GC that people are interested in my bangs. Okay, here we go. Look, can I, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Okay. Uh, Thomas Crapper. <laughs> and he was a plumber. And his... Notability with regard to toilets has often been overstated, mostly due to the publication in 1969 of a fictional biography. So we just started a rumor and ended it right here on your show. How about that? Great. That's why you got to check your facts. Well, that's so, great. so the other guy invented it, but Thomas Crapper, that's a big rumor. Okay? Yeah, All right, course. keep going. You got it. All right. Mm, let's see. We can actually get store perks as well. As you can see, we got a whole bunch of store perks. We can add additional employees. 
uh, so for surplus, fast restocking, all that stuff, you know. But our main purpose right now is to help get the customers what they want. And right. if we found one customer that may want something. So let's say, oh. So unfortunately, we have to get some stuff around. Now, what's with the, the bags for the heads? It's a part of the eco license, eco living system. And okay. honestly, I'm not sure why they had this. Maybe it's because to promote greenery or something. <laughs> I thought they were watching an old Saints game. Oh. <laughs> you don't remember they used to put the bags over their head? I had no idea. Yeah, they used to put the bags over their head. Really? All right. So when you're doing this, you, you're trying to think of things that you could sell to keep the business open, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. It's kind of like when those, they don't really have much to go off of. So you got to like spam it all, like trying to do a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And right now we are almost, this guy's almost ready to, to start shopping. And uh, I, I like to pause a bit, so. Yeah, so the owner's sitting there giving him the sales pitch. Yes, yeah, so your sales pitch is trying to see, what do you like about this, this toilet? What are you most excited about? Yeah, is the seat big enough? Is it round enough? Is it elongated enough? There you go. Does it have a powerful flush? There you go. Yep. All those things. Answer some questions with Eric. All right, that's cool. And Let's... as you can see, there, there's a, there's like a little meter that goes around there. So let me ask you one of those. We're gonna switch gears after the break, but I want you to start thinking about uh, Dungeon and Dragon, Dungeons and Dragons, because you became like a master at that, huh? I wouldn't say a master, more like a um. Maybe it, you know? Okay. So you're pretty good at it. I mean, I'm good to be, to say at least, but I'm not yeah. official dungeon master. Okay. I'm just trying to learn so far. I got you. But you picked it up pretty quick. Right? Yes. And in fact, I'm actually working on a Dungeons and Dragons game. Really? Yes. Well, we're going to talk about that. All right. Let's do this. We'll add a minute to the second segment because we had a natural break period, but I'm going to come back and ask you what you're working on. And we'll be right back. Don't go away more. Do sleep. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. back with the deuce deuce luke and uh he's getting ready to go to college we'll talk to him about that in a little bit but uh when you're doing a dungeons and dragons game and you said you were working on one is the goal to become the dungeon master not necessarily the uh dungeon master is control of the story and how if you basically referee a storyteller a war builder mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other stuff but not necessarily to try to be a dungeon master your main goal is to make sure your players, your adventurers, are the ones who are trying to enjoy their their time there. And what's the goal? Do you try to complete the the whole game in one session, or do, does it go over multiple sessions? It has to go for multiple sessions if you want that, or you could do a one shot. Basically, a one shot is basically a one session all around. Now, getting the UL or ULL, are you going to join that club for? Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. And Dragons. Do Bingo. they have one? They do. They, they do. do. Have you researched it? I have researched it and joined their Discord. Have you really? Yes. Does it cost you money when you join? No. It's free. It's free. Okay. And what happens once you join? They start talking back with you? Well, they talk back. We talk back and forth. We try to create a character, that stuff. But we don't create characters or do um, storytelling until we go into the semester, I believe. So you in the dungeon already? 
<laughs> so to speak. So to speak, yeah. All right, cool. All right, good deal. Now, uh, what other clubs are you going to be joining at ULL? Well, that's a good question. Um, I'll be joining the anime club. The, uh, what is that? All right, so you know how there's like an an animation for any kind of purpose? Mm-hmm. There's one especially popular that's called Japanese animation or anime. Okay. You know, when we had HD, I mean, we've been open 40 years, but back in the day, we had to have multiple massive computers to just get 10 seconds of animation. We had to render it overnight, sometimes two days, just to make an HTV logo. Now, everything's animated. Well, it's true. And, but here's the cool part. Mm-hmm. Anime is really um, handwritten or uh, computer generated sometimes. Okay. What's your major going to be at ULL? Uh, creative writing. Uh, then I'm taking some minors, basically uh, for visual arts and business and some other stuff. All right. Now, I know you wanted to talk about what you're going to do when you get out of college, but you're just starting. So you got a little road ahead. But, hey, it's good to have dreams, right? Good to have dreams. All right. What you what you want to do? I want to make my own creative business. Try to make something of myself. Mm-hmm. Basically, I want to get a light mic to me, basically, mm-hmm. up in the battle. All right, so you would have to, how do you make money doing that? Selling books, basically, and making my own TV series as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yes, indeed. So you make the TV series and you hope somebody comes and says, I love that deuce, we want to buy it. Is that how it works? Not necessarily in my case, because I don't want anyone to buy the TV series. I want to make sure I make my own stuff myself. You're going to syndicate it. Syndicator, yeah, it's something like that. All right. Similar to how they did it with the alligator hunting here and cop shows and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Some people produce it and they syndicate it and networks pick it up. And that's, well, how, that's I, how they do it. I don't want to have Disney. I don't want to have Disney or Marvel being in my feet. Okay. Neither will be DC and stuff like that because they've done some questionable things. But what if they come... Or somebody comes to you and says, Deuce, we want to pay you a few million dollars and we're going to give you creative control where you still have control of all your shows. Mm-hmm. Is that okay? I'll be okay, but I have to be over, of right. course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right, so how about creating video games based on all those characters you've been telling me about? You got that right. I would definitely be doing that. All right. Is that some, that's one of your goals. That's, that's a part of my goal, actually. Mm-hmm. My main part is to create a whole a whole multiverse of characters based on my own characters. Okay. Who's your least favorite person in, like, the Disney character? Oh, you got me there. I mean, there's so much I can tell, but if you're talking about a least favorite Disney character... Alex Russo. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Alex Russo really got me whenever she's like the laziest and most unimaginative character in all of this. Scene. And to be fair, it's a ripoff from Harry Potter. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's your opinion. I don't really know about it because I haven't watched it. Well, there you go. So you would be the one to tell me that. So Let's go back to the computer and, and let's pick up from the computer again. Well, look, tell us what you're working on. Well, luckily we got another got this guy who wants to see a deal. So Anthony's just uh doing a deal here, and he's oh another one wanted the deal. Oh, we got some we got some money. Oh, we got two deals. Woo-hoo. Look at that. We got this <laughs> customer. How much you want to buy for it? 212, wow, that's pretty, that's a lot. 212 bucks? Yep, Samoans, actually. Samoans? Samoans. How much is a Samoan? You got me there. All right. We're going to have to, look, we're going to look it up again. I'm going to go. Ooh, 431, wow. All right, let's see. Uh, Hey, Siri. Hmm? How much does a Samoan uh, stack up to a dollar? Okay, let's see. Isn't that just a slang deuce, if I'm looking it up, a Samoan? No, I don't think so. That's an actual currency? Yes. You could teach me. Let's see. Let me look that up. Because I don't know if I'm... I've heard people go, how many Samoans? 
But I don't, I don't know if that's a slang. Let me look it up because it didn't. Samoan. You need up, need up spelling it? Where is it at? Oh, slang term for money. Yes. Well, as I say, Sims uses it as a currency, I think. They do. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's their currency. So we've, so we've, we've answered two things today. Correct. John Crapper and Samoan. We got it. We're on a roll. We're on a roll. All, All right. right. Keep going. Here we go. Another. Oh, what? That's how much for the, for the toilet? Wow. We got it. We got on a roll. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see who else wants to have some more. Uh, you. I'm uh, not going to close the deal. That's be too risky. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, shall we discuss it? Price range. Uh, ooh, we can show up our muscles. <laughs> Love something I wanted to do for a while. I notice when you put people in segments, they're all built, slender, working out. No room for big people in there, right? <laughs> No so room big people. You can say that. Well, you got to put the general populace. That's true. I mean, I might have to do that one time. Maybe whenever I, whenever I. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. back with deuce luke and we are rocking and rolling today but we've been talking about a lot of things but you know i remember a few years back you know a show that was so popular <laughs> power rangers yes power rangers all right I what, what's your take on power Rangers? is that still popular it it's actually slowly declining because you know they got older and whenever we were growing up we were happy that we were seeing a cool show called power rangers yeah but now it's sort of distant in memory. Everybody, every kid had to have a Power Ranger toy. I know, right? And I was. Did you a, have them? No, I did not. But I actually wanted to have a Power. I played the Power Ranger games, like Power Ranger Samurai, the game on the Wii. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a fun memory. I can remember those times I sliced up the the uh, bad guys mm -hmm. using my Power Ranger. It's fun. I bet. So, what did you do when you were playing it? Most people, when they're playing on the computer, they make themselves a ham sandwich and drink a little soft drink with it while they're playing. You do that? What do you do? Are you focusing on just your computer? Well, I, whenever I'm not playing on the computer, I will watch movies on there. Uh, maybe maybe listen to music. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll, whenever I watch a movie, I like to eat, eat like a little, little chips and stuff. I see you in your office sometimes jamming out. Oh, you see now. I told your mom that we were laughing. You were jamming out one day. You were busting it up. I would. I can jam pretty good. Yeah. And you. What, what do you listen to that you were? Uh, you were moving all over in your office, and I looked at Dwayne. I was sort of laughing because you were. <laughs> you were like in your own world. You can say that. <laughs> you can never say that. Why don't you eat blueberries when you're working on the computer? That's real good for you. Uh. You don't mm. like blueberry? Mm. You like mm. strawberries? I never tried to buy like the uh, uh, strawberry shakes. Yeah, well, that's different now. That's, I that's a lot of auto I, like, I like apples. Apples are good. Apples are good. That's but then it's apples or grapes. And I love blueberry. And I love strawberries. You like cantaloupe? Oh, yes, cantaloupe. I do like cantaloupes. You know, like watermelon too? Oh, without seeds, of course. Yeah, well, you can spit the seeds out. Well, so I don't like to do that. You can't do it if you're in the house, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your room will be all full of seeds. <laughs> Next thing you know, jail walking, you got a watermelon vine hanging from your roof. It'll be all seedy. <laughs> 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 oh, Deuce is on a roll today. Yes, indeed. 
All right, um, so my favorite Power Ranger show, um, there are a few, and it will be have to be um, Mystic Force, mm -hmm. RPM, and then Mega Force. My right. top three. Uh, and how many Power Rangers games did it have? Um, I should say very few because they only made like one Wii game and mm -hmm. then they made computer games, and that was about it. Do y'all still do the games where? I really wasn't into computers except for Pong. Every now and then we'd play on the Atari at my okay. house because we didn't have access to all that. But then they came out with games you could play on the TV. You could play mm -hmm. golf or tennis. So is that real popular now amongst it teenagers? Is. It is. Well, not amongst teenagers, but maybe around the low kids or yeah. maybe around your average young adults. But yeah, okay. they're actually pretty cool because they actually have Wii Sports, Wii Sports Resort, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So we sports got real big. Oh yes, it did. Massive, huh? Massive. It was like the most popular kids' game ever. And there's courses in in college now that teach all this, right? I... Or you can at least go hang out in the room where they have it. Yes. Yeah, because I know Nichols has a big facility for that, and I'm sure ULL has. The well, same. I call it the rec room personally, but yeah, okay. I'm gonna be working out over there. Uh, before I go, I'm going to go to the Y. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah, what time are you going to get up every morning? You got me there. I mean, Three I... Three in the morning, right? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not that hardcore. All right. So, if you first class... What happens if you go to your advisor and they say, Deuce, here's your courses this year. Your first course is going to be the 7.30 a.m. course. That means... Deuce has to get up about 6, get ready, do a little preparation. Do you get up early normally? I do. Okay. Well, not normally per se, but I do take an alarm if I need to. All right. What's the earliest you get up and what's the latest you like to sleep? Uh, I really like to get about 5 or 6 in the morning. Okay. And then earliest I like to go, latest I like to go to sleep. 12 to 1. Wow. Yeah. So you're only getting four hours of sleep a night. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's probably why I have very little bit about creativity. All right. Well, there you go. All right. So got about two and a half minutes left. Tell me some of the things you're doing right now to start getting ready for the big move. Basically, I have some plans in store. Going to the wine. Um, let's see. But, um... Trying some new games out, of course. Mm -hmm. Getting my computer repaired, definitely. Yeah. And, well, basically my computer needs to get repaired because of some updates. Um, and get invite friends and family and yourself includes who you mm -hmm. adding that me and my parents are going to host. It's going to be a big house, by the way. This is a going away deal? A going away deal, yes. That's what it's exactly going to be. So the deuce will have Prepared himself for college, had his own TV show, aspiring to do something big, and you had to tackle one of the biggest things you've tackled your whole life, and that was autism, but you showed the people how to do it. Hmm. It's got to make you feel pretty good. It does, honestly. It makes me feel good helping other people like, for, like me or helping other people who don't know about it or just helping other people in general. Mm-hmm. So, yep, you're definitely a lot more confident today than you were 43 shows ago. So the show has done you a lot of good. You have learned how to command your audience. Of course. And don't forget, it is 42 after all. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to command the classroom now, right? Uh, of course I will. All right. Good and day. I'm going to do some interviews while I'm at it. Cool. There you go. We're going to get you on Skype or Zoom. Either, either way. Either one. Either you, one. You know how to do it. All right, Deuce. Take us out. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang is the thing today. Deuce Luke is the guest. He'll be going to ULL in a couple of weeks. So we have a couple of more shows with him. And then we're going to see him from Lafayette via Skype or Zoom. He's going to tell us how it's all going. Thanks for joining us. This has been The Deuce is Loose.
In a world of silence, there's a different kind of language, autism, a unique puzzle that brings its own beautiful picture. Where others see a blank canvas, they see boundless creativity. Each day, they awaken with purpose and determination. Their minds are a vast universe, exploring countless subjects with passion. Deuce Luke said it best when he said, Autism is not a disability, it's a different ability. Just like a seed becomes a magnificent tree, they too blossom into something extraordinary. Embrace the beauty of their world. Learn more about autism. Visit Understand Autism for more information. That's www.understandautism.org. You can also find help by calling 800-3-AUTISM. That's 1-800-328-8476. Thank you for watching The Deuce is Loose here on HTV10. Weights and Downer. You or someone you know has lost the ability to earn a living because someone put the company interests before their well-being. In times like these, there's one firm who has handled hundreds of catastrophic and lost earning cases. Before you settle fast with a company's attorney, give Weights and Downer a call. 985-876-0870. Weights and Downer. Let us fight for your rights.